Okay, so we're going to start with doing the clipper work around his face and his what would technically be his flat work if you were to strip him. I'm using a seven blade on his ear just because generally their ear is stripped pretty short and we want to mimic what a stripped look would look would be on a Welshie with the clipper. We'll make it look as close to that as possible. So we use this on the outside of the ear and like I said earlier I had used a 10 blade on the inside of his ear. Get it nice and short in there and then we're going to use a 7 on the side of his face so from the back corner of his eye to the front corner of his ear. It's okay big man. Uh, from that line down all this can be shaved with a seven blade. And then we'll shave his neck and his throat. Good man, Joe. Figured showing you guys on a elderly Welshie would be easier for people that have elderly Welshies that they're having to start groom on their own. And you can see how I handle Joe so that he's comfortable and not stressed. He does have the terrier shakes, which uh, in the grooming world we call it the terrier shakes because it's all terriers do this. They just have the shaky nerve and it's not that he's scared, it's just he's jittery. So we'll shave all this out. I'm going to hold his ear forward and shave out the side of his neck as well. I'm going to stand him up. Come on, Joe. And I'll do the side of his shoulder here and his chest, the front of his leg. I leave a little bit of a necktie because I like to thin that in. Find that just leaves a little bit of fill on the chest. Yeah, all this stuff can come out. And then, put them back in the noose. Or grooming loop is a better way to call it. And I'm going to shave just around his bum as well with the seven. And this also gives the appearance of a nice tight coat over the rump and there's his hawk joint and Welshies have a very let down hawk so all this stuff I do go to about two fingers above his hawk bone and just skim it out like that with the seven nice and short all the way down to there and then I will also do the side of his tail I've already done the bottom half and the other side, side of his tail with a seven as well. And then I'm going to switch to the five blade. First, I'll quickly show you why we use this Andis rake on a lot of dogs. I do actually use this on hand strip dogs as well. This is will not break their coat. I have tried it on many different types of terriers, from giant schnauzers who have very soft coats to a very hard coat Welshie like my girl Hennessy. And what it does is you just essentially brush them with it and it pulls out all that undercoat. It just makes your life easier because sometimes when they have a really thick coat, it's really hard to shave them. So if you can get your hands on one of these, it might be hard because they're actually very new and Anda seems to be the only one that's come out with a very close rake like this. Um, you can try dog shows or go on the Andis website and by chance see if you can find a distributor near you that sells them. They are a wonderful tool. Okay, so we're gonna go to the five. And I'm going to do the top of his head. So with the eyebrow, if you feel the top of your dog's head, you can feel their, their skull bone 
and as you go forward it dips in behind their eye so that's where their eye socket is so what we do is we start shaving the top of their head you want to sit bud? at the back of where the eye eye socket is so where the eye where the bone begins is where we start shaving because if you go too far forward then you'll chop off part of the eyebrow and it'll give them a little bit of a incorrect look. I'm just going to sneak to the side here. And then all this stuff can come off too. Good boy, Joe. Good man, Joe. And then all this stuff off of his neck. And his back. Stand him up. Come on, Joe. Put him back in the loop. So one thing I wanted to show you is with an elderly dog, even if it's a dog that's a little bit more unstable on their feet, is how to hold them up. So what I do is I stick my hand between their legs, and Sean is going to go to the mirror to show you what I'm doing on the opposite side of his body. And I hold him steady with my hand. You can, here, hold my, ha my hand there to hold him steady. So that when I'm shaving the opposite side of him, he just has something to brace against if he's a little unsteady on his legs. So you can come back on this side. And then that way, I have to do it with my opposite hand because I'm horrible at shaving with my left arm. I can just brace him and he has a little bit more stability and doesn't feel like he's going to fall over if he's unsteady on his legs. And then they don't get a skirt. No terriers really get a skirt, well, long leggeds. They get an underline. So what I do is I shave all of this off and just skim out at the very bottom, right? Because there's his, there's the bottom of his rib cage, and this stuff, what I do is I thin it. I'll show you that later, but you just take your clipper and you just skim it right off. You don't tuck it in, and you don't have to just stop or else you'll get a blunt line, and that's something that we see a lot um, with groomers that just haven't been taught it yet, is they get this blunt line, so it looks like they have this straight across line going across, uh, going from the shaved hair to the unshaved hair. So we just skim it out. That's the same with the side of the shoulder here with the seven, is you could just feel for the, th uh, the shoulder muscle and just skim out into the leg. And then that way, your leg hair transitions better into your body hair. So we'll take all the rest of this out. Good boy, Joe. And then also what I do is I'll roll the skin over like this. And then that way I can shave where their tuck up is without accidentally shaving this hair. This hair is very essential or else if you cut that off it looks like his leg is just kind of sticking out of his body there. And then this way when you leave that hair and we thin it later it blends into his body more and just looks like there's more flow. Okay and then also what we do with the back leg is all of the hair off of the back thigh muscle gets shaved off. And then again, you just skim it into the front of the thigh muscle here, into the front part of the leg. And this skimming, it takes practice. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for quite a while, so it's like breathing to me, so it's a lot easier. But it just helps this way, especially for with uh, groomers. 
We, uh, we talk about working smarter, not harder. And by doing this skimming here, it's less work with your scissor work later. And then you don't have to sit there as long blending all of that in. Good boy, Joe. And then what you can do with the tail too is some people just shave it right off. It just depends. Some people like a more fuller tail to make the tail look like it has more uh, oomph to it is what I'll do is I'll thin all this off. But um, we have a lot of our clients that prefer it to just be shaved right off. So I'll also take the five off uh, on the top of the tail. Okay, we're gonna take a break and then we'll go to some scissor work.